A message from Moody about the 7th of July 2005. Dear viewer, I hope this finds you well, in good spirit and having a good day. Regarding the 7-7-2005 terrorist attacks in London, let us look at the facts and see what we were told and compare them. Then, using Occam's razor and common sense, let us see what conclusions are to be drawn so we can all understand what most likely really did happen that day. First chapter, title, Mock Exercises and Bomb Hoaxes in the Run-Up to 7-7-2005 More than a year before the 7-7-2005 attacks, on the 16th of May 2004, an edition of the BBC One Panorama programme broadcasted a mock exercise imagining what would happen if a terrorist attack was executed in London in the near future consisting of three explosions on tube trains in the London Underground and one explosion on a road vehicle. The following excerpt from the BBC programme gives us a good idea of why this program was made. If there are now bombs going off uh, above ground, uh, in this case uh, a, a lorry being attacked, it could happen anywhere. So the uh, potential for mass panic across not just the capital but the whole country is very much with us. Um, I think therefore we need to look at more uh, serious measures. We do have reserve powers in effect to take over the BBC if we were to wish to and to get them to broadcast whatever we wanted them to broadcast. Those powers are there in the Broadcasting Act. My advice to the Prime Minister would be not to use those, but I think we should be talking to the uh, broadcasters about having the Prime Minister on the air very quickly. You want to disagree with that, Michael, at all? No, I entirely agree that uh, the Prime Minister should be out there. Uh, and we shouldn't be using the powers to bring in the BBC, but we should certainly be talking to the broadcasters about the way in which the coverage is going to be organised. Please note well that he said the coverage is going to be organised. In other words, he was saying that they would write the script for and then edit and control the media coverage of an event in which there were three explosions on London tube trains and one on a road vehicle, if such an event were to take place in the near future. The question that begs to be asked is this. Was that what they were actually in the process of planning and precisely the reason for that program? This is the kind of terrorist attack the government repeatedly says is going to happen. We've been absolutely clear we can't guarantee that there will never be an attack. It's quite likely that they're planning one now. I am wondering about the purpose and effect of this very program. This BBC Panorama program appears to have been used by those behind the 7-7-2005 attack as the means by which the media's response to the attack in the near future was studied so it could be controlled and directed towards their own ends. Mr Price plays the bad cop and issues the threat of taking over control of the BBC and then Mr Portillo plays the good cop and says that there is no need to do that as long as the BBC behaves itself and broadcasts whatever they want them to. The good cop, bad cop scenario is just theatre to deceive the viewer. The reality is that the BBC is a government propaganda machine and is already and always has been controlled and used by the government. The headlines at nine o'clock. In the past hour, there have been three major explosions on the London Underground. The first occurred at ten past eight on the Piccadilly line between Knightsbridge and Hyde Park Corner. The second at 16 minutes past eight on the central line between Tottenham Court Road and Oxford Circus. And the third at 27 minutes past eight as a train was arriving at Vauxhall Station from Stockwell on the Victoria Line. 
Emergency services have been called to all three scenes. There are no reports available yet on the number of casualties, and the police have said that it's too early to identify a possible cause. London Underground is now closed, and the police are asking people not to travel. 350,000 people alone are making their way towards the city of London at this point. And if the access overload system has been triggered and they can't get onto the mobile telephones, this will have pr profound indications for them, the next of kin. We can now confirm that a tanker carrying chlorine has exploded at the junction of Shoreditch High Street and Commercial Street. Chlorine is extremely toxic in this form and the police are issuing express warnings to people to stay indoors, close windows and remain there until the all clear is given. In the days leading up to 7-7-2005, there were hoax bomb scares in Nottingham and Sheffield. Were these false alarm hoaxes meant not only to cause panic and confusion, but also to lull everyone into a false sense of security, and into thinking that the initial reports in London on 7-7-2005 would also be false alarm hoaxes, so people would ignore them until it was too late? Second chapter title Peter Power Dupe or Accomplice Then, on 7 7 2005, we were told on TV by Peter Power of Visor Consultants that they and the private company employing them, who helped choose the scenario for it, were running a mock terrorist drill in the London Underground with practically the same scenario as what actually really happened on that day. In other words, the actual mock anti-terror drill that the BBC Panorama programme of May 2004 had outlined had been chosen by Visor's client to be carried out on the very same day that four Muslim suicide bombers also chose the same scenarios that Visor's client had chosen for the mock drill causing real and devastating explosions on three London tube trains and one road vehicle. Please think about that unbelievable set of coincidences for a few seconds, to let the implications of it sink in. Then, please ask yourself, what are the odds against all of that happening by chance? Just to get this right, you were actually working today on an exercise that envisioned yes. virtually this scenario. Uh, almost precisely. I was up until 2 o'clock this morning because it, it's our job, my own company, Visor Consultants. We specialise in helping people to get their crisis management response. How do you jump from slow time thinking to quick time doing? And we chose a scenario with their assistance which is based on a terrorist attack because they're very close to uh, a property occupied by Jewish businessmen. They're in the city and there are more American banks in the city than there are in the whole of New York. A logical thing to do. And it, I've still so got how, the... I was I've going got to say, how extraordinary today <laughs> must feel for you as, as it unfolds. In his TV video clip, Peter Power states that their customer helped to choose the exact scenario. I repeat... Visor's customer helped to choose the exact scenario. To this day, Peter Power refuses to publicly identify the customer who chose the exact scenario. Why? The footage of the fourth, third chapter title, Foreign Security Firms. Can they be trusted? Verint Systems is the security firm that is responsible for the CCTV surveillance cameras in the London Underground Rail Network, and it is an Israeli company with approximately a thousand employees. No CCTV for Muslims boarding the tube trains has been released by Verint, who claim that their cameras were not working. Why? because the four Muslims were not on the tube trains that blew up.